Hello, everyone. My name is Pete DiStefano. I'm uh, Vice President of Marketing from Pygo Technologies. I want to thank you all for uh, joining us today for our webinar on choosing the right mobile strategy for your business. Uh, our plan is to have about a 30 to 40 minute presentation and then leave plenty of time for your questions. Uh, I would tell you that uh, the best webinars are the ones where there's engagement and any questions, any thoughts that you have, whether it's directly related to this topic or not, feel free to ask the questions through the Q&A process uh, on this WebEx. Um, if we don't have an answer for you, and we'll do our best to answer it right here live, but if we don't have an answer, we promise to follow up with an answer and provide that answer to the entire group. So again, I wanna thank you guys for taking the time today. Uh, Today, I'll be co-presenting with a colleague of mine. Um, his name is Ritwick Bose. He's our Global Director of Pre-Sales Consulting. Together, we're going to share with you uh, our, an approach, what we think is a, a best practice approach to defining a mobile strategy. And you know, whether you're a small company, mid-sized, or even a large company, uh, I know that many of you have jumped into mobility in some way or maybe are about to. And a lot of people have felt the pressure for good reason. I'm going to go over some numbers in a moment. They felt the pressure that, man, I've got to get involved. I've got to somehow be mobile. And, and the thing I'm going to really impress upon you, and I think that will come through over and over as we go through uh, our uh, event, is that, it's really important that whatever you do with regard to mobility, it has a direct relationship uh, to what you're trying to achieve as a company. And don't just go mobile because you feel the pressure and because everyone else is. Uh, I believe, and I think you'll see, and you probably already have seen, that there's a lot of real reasons that could support you being able to do things you couldn't do before or making it simpler to do business. Uh, but it's real important. A lot of companies have got, gotten caught up in spending money, making the investment to show that they've kind of got the checkbox. Really don't suggest you do that. And hopefully through this session, we'll give you some guidelines and some ideas on how to build out a strategy that really connects directly to your uh, corporate uh, and your IT goals as a business. So I'm going to start us off here, and I'm going to talk. I'm going to show some numbers. Uh, it's like, you know, I go both ways on do I show this, because some of this should be very obvious. But as you can imagine, there are many, many, many mobile phones. But I will tell you today that mobility is not just about mobile smartphones. It's, it's, it's not just about the iPhones and Androids and Windows phones. Um, mobility has taken on a whole new meaning and continues to evolve. So a mobile device is not necessarily just a smartphone or a tablet. It could be a watch. It could be a, a device attached to, to uh, an energy system. There's so many things. We'll talk a little bit about that later on. But the point is, and I think everyone on this call knows it, it's not something to be ignored. but in my opinion, it's something actually to be embraced if done well, it can really become a very important part of your strategy, just like IT has always been a very important part of a strategy. So how do you implement a strategy just as if you were to do in a more traditional sense with other technologies you've engaged with in the past? So just a couple numbers, this came from Aberdeen. This was mid-size and large companies. So these weren't really small companies, but it was a combination of mid-sized and small companies. And again, I'm not sure there's a lot of surprise here, but 50% of the people that were surveyed by uh, Aberdeen are looking to redesign their existing mobile applications. And, and the reason this is important is what was mobile, what was possible, what was defined as mobile two, three years ago, that definition has changed. It's extended. It's expanded. Um, and, and quite frankly, a year and two from now, it, it'll continue to evolve. Uh, so there are a lot of companies looking at how do I redesign? Because a lot of companies did get in and say, how do I just check the box and show that I've got some level of mobile access? 
as opposed to really rethinking. Um, corporate policies or company policies to define mobile application excellence baselines. This is kind of a, what we're talking about. What should be your overall strategy when it comes to mobility, whether it be within, inside, inside your company, internally, with customers, um, et cetera. Converting web applications to mobile applications. Now, I, I want to key on the word convert because if all you're going to do is take the exact thing you were doing on, on the web and move it to mobile, depending on what that is, that could be okay, but I think you could be shortcutting the opportunity to really be, have a game-changing experience for the intended user, and we'll talk about that. Redesigning mobile web applications. So, you know, we'll talk a lot. You'll hear a lot about what does it mean to be mobile-friendly, and, you know, a lot of companies – uh, that's kind of the first thing they do is let me at least take my current web implementation and make it mobile friendly. And, and again, the reality is, as those charts I just showed you, there are millions and millions of these devices being used inside your companies, as well as the, when you talk about prospects, your business partners, your existing customers, and again, as I mentioned, your employees. And then finally, those who were early adopters and had been leveraging mobile applications, okay, they're now really focusing on usability and the experience and personalization, which is one of the things that mobile applications uh, enables, as opposed to just functionality. Uh, a user experience, end user experience, uh, as many of you know, is becoming one of the most important things with anything you do with regards to IT, but especially when we're talking about these personalized devices that are being used to engage. So this idea of mobile is the new normal, you know, again, as, a, as, a, as an evolution, you know, for the several years it's been, how do we make the mobile experience as good as the PC experience? And that's no longer the case. It's, it's in a category on its own. The demand from users, and as I mentioned earlier, whether it's your employees, whether it's your prospects, your business partners, et cetera, the demands on being able to have uh, mobile technologies and tools implemented, um, it, it really has kind of changed the thought to where it's not about how do you make it as good of, of past implementations, but how do you literally take advantage of those technologies and the uniquenesses that those technologies bring. And we'll talk about that later on in, in, in the sessions uh, and give you some examples so you understand, you know, what mobility brings to the table beyond what seems to be obvious in, in access and, and um, taking advantage of the millions and millions of people that are depending on these devices. Okay, a couple more numbers. We also came from Aberdeen. The number one uh, pressure for 71% of the organizations has increased demand for mobile application access. The reason I share this with you is to make sure that if you're feeling that pressure, you don't just jump in. You know, and and we'll, we'll talk about it. You, know, you don't want to make that investment because you have the pressure. What you need to look at is the reason you have the pressure because there's a lot of people who are using these devices, they're demanding they have access to services um, products and information, but it's really understanding how is it that you can implement a strategy that doesn't just check the box, and I know I'm being a little redundant here, but really connects directly to um, uh, your business. Uh, I've been in the tech space and IT for a very long time, and it was right, it was the late 80s where um, implementing technology for technology's sake kind of went out the door. And, and as any IT leader knows, you have to have a strong business case on why you're going to make that investment. I don't care how big or how small your company is. I'm guessing the smaller the company, the, the evaluation of is it worth it's even that much more important. It should be the same thing with implementing a, a mobile solution. Is there going to be a direct benefit? And what is the ROI, et cetera? It's really that important that you don't make that next step unless you really have clarity on what you believe the result will be from doing that. 69% of businesses list building a mobile infrastructure is vital. 
you know, when you say building an infrastructure, depending on the size of your company, this also can tie back to your, if you're going to have a mobile first strategy, if you're going to build, depending on how many people you support, how many customers you have, you have to start beyond just creating the app, but how do I support the app? How do I distribute the application? So a lot of companies are looking at how do I look at this as not just a one-off, but a part of my IT infrastructure. And finally, 91% end users, they're using a smartphone or a tablet, and the form factors of what, you know, and the types of devices, you know, it goes beyond smartphone and tablet. I promise you in a year, there'll be two or three other devices. Uh, this whole idea of Internet of Things is beyond, way beyond cute or, you know, interesting. It is very applicable uh, to many companies whether you're a large industrial company right down to a smaller company. So, as I mentioned earlier, this evolution continues. So, just at a high level, you know, what do mobile technologies enable? The, any, the access anytime, anywhere. I'm not going to talk a lot about millennials, and that being a big, a very large audience, I believe second to baby boomers. They've grown up living the whole mobile environment. They were the what is known as the first mobile prosumers. They, they live there, they review there, they learn there, they purchase there. Um, so this access anytime, anywhere, the ability to service your customers and users in real time, seamless collaboration with peers and experts, and this whole idea of enhancing productivity, access uh, to knowledge and support tools. It really takes a lot of the things that you would have expected traditionally and takes them up to another level. The, 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 with cameras and video, uh, with uh, the capability to have location services to where it's not just anywhere, anytime, but it's exactly where you are and what's appropriate based on where you are at a specific time. Faster issue resolution, ability to track and find anything, simplifying complex systems. There's a lot of companies, uh, again, even small, mid-sized companies that have a, a, a certain amount of back-end information and disparate systems that a lot of companies are leveraging mobile to kind of bring that information together in easy, simple to understand format to be able to make business decisions. So there's lots of capabilities uh, with mobile and then it goes even deeper based on the specific capability to navigate and the user experience. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we move forward. So lots of capabilities that are either much easier to do or actually there's things we can do now that we just couldn't do before uh, with a traditional web environment, or internet environment. So there's all these apps. I mean, I'm sure everyone here, there's a certain amount of apps you have on your phones, and, and there's all sorts of apps that are available, you know, whether it's Google or, or through, through Apple. But the concern is you've got to make sure if you're looking at developing an app, whether it be in internally for your employees or your operations or external, how do you avoid wasting money? You know, how do you avoid building that app that's just not going to get engaged with? And we're going to talk about that, and that's another reason to have a strong process for developing your strategy. So just when we talk about, you know, the mistakes people make when they jump in, if you've got poor performing mobile solution or you've got poor usability. And again, the demand on, from your customers, from your employees continues to grow. You can lose visitors, you can lose potential customers. I, I'm sure many of you know today that you're, you know, people go to a website or, or go to a mobile app. If it doesn't function, if it doesn't satisfy them, they quickly go to the next um, provider of a similar service or offering that you have. So it's, it's, it's really important that you don't deliver a bad experience. From a productivity perspective, you know, mobility done well in an internal environment can improve, significantly improve your employee satisfaction, their productivity, but you can have exactly the opposite effect, again, if you throw something out there that doesn't really um, perform as it would be expected based on the way mobile solutions are being delivered today. And then just like your website, your, your digital footprint in many cases, whether it's your web or mobile, is the first engagement. It's the first impression people have of your company. 
And if that's not a good impression, it will have an impact on your brand and your reputation. And as I mentioned earlier, unless you do have, you know, a very, very, very unique service, um, there's people out there they can go to very quickly. Uh, this is an environment today where people will spend some time, they'll learn a little bit, and if they're not happy with what they see or how uh, their experience is, they can easily bounce to somebody else. So these are just some things to think about. And again, I can only encourage you to have a well thought out plan before you spend a dime on investing in a mobile um, application. Okay, so I just wanted to kind of set this up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to pass uh, the baton over uh, to my colleague, Ritwick Bowes, and he's going to take you through four or five steps that we believe are the types of steps from an overall company perspective. What is the best way to develop a mobile strategy? So if you'll give me a moment here, I'm going to sign the presentation to Ritwick, which you now should have, Ritwick. Okay, thank you, Pete. Okay, I believe everyone can see my screen now. Um, thank you, Pete. Uh, that was quite insightful. Uh, so basically, what what we do when we when, when we think about a mobile application strategy from a company perspective, uh, if you look at it right now, I mean, the, there are studies which show that uh, one in every 10 people check their phone every five minutes. You know, just, just walk down a busy street anywhere or sit on the bench on a park, you will probably see more tops of people's heads than their eyes. Why? And most of them are either checking some kind of information that holds everything important to them in the world. Uh, I mean, there, there are statistics which showed the adoption rate. The time we spend on our smartphones have increased dramatically. At the same time, the number of regular desktop users have started dwindling. The attention is now fixed on mobile devices, and a lot of the organizations have focused their approach towards making some kind of presence on the mobile world. So before you start implementing or developing a mobile solution or you know, made for your employees or for your consumers, it's important to consider a strategy that will help you either monetize from it or optimize your business. And we'll cover a few of these steps in identifying what is required to build a mobile app strategy. So let, let's look at the business goals and plans. I mean, the most important part is the business plan because that's the core of entrepreneurship. With the clear objectives laid in front of you, you think of all the ways to provide solutions to the problems faced by the customer or your internal employees. What makes you decide the course of action? What all aspects you want your brand to touch upon? Brainstorm all the key areas that can influence the outcome. It is always better to write your business plan to give a solid form to your thoughts and ideas. Now, this enables to go back and refer to the points that we have listed down here. You need to either improve your employees' productivity. You want to reduce the sales cycle. You want to have more actionable insights about your business in form of dashboards. It could be related to your, you know, to your profit and loss requirements. It could be related to see how the performance of your employees are. So it could be either way. Or it could be even to see whether your customers are loyal to you. So define your, your business plan and also ensure that you have a marketing plan, which means your key stakeholders are up to the mark in terms of understanding where you, are, where you want to position your application. So that brings up to our next point is who are these stakeholders? Now, deciding upon the stakeholders and finding out more about competition is of very good health. I mean, if you need to ensure that people who are investing in your application. Now, invest, investment over here is more or, more or less from your own business unit, or it could be the customers who would be paying for the application if it is a consumer-facing application. But in this case, you would also have to consider all the metrics and analytics that will help you analyze your solution's performance. Now, when I say solution, it could be a mobile app, it could be platform, it could be framework, whatever it is. 
because we have audience from different kind of uh, verticals and business uh, in this uh, webinar. So, so we have to kind of like, you know, we, we need to keep a tab on what is selling and what is not. So next point is, how do you identify your users? So I touched upon the point that you could have business to consumer applications, you could have business to business application where you are, you know, you're building an application to strengthen your relationship with your suppliers and vendors, or you have a business to employee application where the employees are, you know, using the application for some, some purpose. Now, a lot of the people do question that at the end of the day, who would use the app? Most of the time, what we see is that if the app is not relevant to them, they delete the application within the first 30 minutes of it being installed on their device, which is not good. So a lot of people gloss over this metric, but, but tracking your user is fundamental in creating a deeper engagement, like segmenting your audience, understand what they want, tracking their behavior. I mean, how are they interacting with the application? Customers would interact in a different way, your employees would interact in a different way. What, what investors expect from that application? Are they expecting a revenue increase? Are they expecting a productivity increase? Are they expecting a efficiency increase? All of these needs to be defined at the very early end. So once you know your user base, you know, you understand their, their usage pattern, you could start defining the baseline for improving engagement to increase your, uh, you know, users from across all the channels, maybe web, mobile, you know, any digital engagement that they are looking at. So that brings to the point as to how do we understand the end users' expectations. Now, there are a lot of mobile app studies which actually report and state usability and the user experience are more important than the brand name itself. So you have to remember, users will not tolerate mobile apps that are perceived to be slow to open or operate. Speed is the most important thing in app. So for it is, you cannot just assume that a web application which is there or a website which is there and looking at the website from a mobile device will change the behavior of your user. Users often access these applications when they have only a few minutes of downtime and so speed is paramount. Uh, you have to also expect that application needs to be simplified it has to be customized for the user. It needs to have certain amount of personalized features. So today when you are designing a mobile application, when you're thinking about the strategy of a mobile application, think what kind of devices they would be using it from. Are they gonna be using some elements of their social behavior? Would they be using it for uh, increase, improving their connection? So, at the bottom bottom line, I mean, mobile app users, they, they actually do not want to be overwhelmed by too many choices and distractions when they're trying to access a feature. People want fewer choices in mobile because if you put too many choices in mobile, at the end of the day, you're gonna be losing your users. So let's look at identifying device. Now, when, when we talk about device, two, three years back, device was only related to smartphones and tablets. But today you have kiosks, you have wearables, you have connected devices. There, there are a whole lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, different segments of device categorization by itself. Now, once you have defined your target audience, you have defined your KPIs, both from a company level as well as mobile specific, you need to decide if you're going to build a native or a hybrid application. And this also boils down to, you know, how, whether you're targeting on a single device or multiple type of device. You need to look at, bring your own device policies or restricted policies. I mean, the policies these days have, there are so many. I mean, BYOD is to ensure that you give employees satisfied. You keep them satisfied by helping them bring their own devices. And there are statistics which shows that almost about 83% of smartphone users today who are employees, they consider their mobile device more important to them than their morning cup of coffee. BYOD can help you appear more competitive when seeking potential employees because today in the age of millennials, when you're looking at hiring the, 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 the new age of employees, 
they always want to see information on their device. They research a lot on their device. They get accessibility of applications on their device. So we need to understand all of these different realms of uh, devices which are out there, how you can you know, gather information, how the, the options of CYOD, which is you know, choose your own device. Employees and millennials these days, they get to choose their own devices. And then you have company issued personal uh, enabled devices. So these are, are are more traditional in nature, but we will be coming, uh, you know, coming up and helping in terms of understanding what makes sense because mobile application at the end of the day is for the user. Let's look at the tools, technologies, and processes. Now, there are a lot of these, um, you know, these these verbiage and these buzzwords which are out there: responsive web design, HTML5, hybrid application, native application. Everything boils down to how, what the what the user wants and how quickly you can share your information. May it be company protected information, so you need to think about security elements, or may it be consumer facing application. So while while the support that HTML5 provides more mobile apps, um, you know, and it, it improves, it is improving very quickly. Uh, on the other hand, native kind of like always gives you that optimal user experience. And in order to determine which one of the two offerings um, that you will uh, basically go ahead as a part of your strategy, you need to understand who you're building the application for. So this will boil down to you know the, how exactly the application is developed, and because if you are developing for your consumers, you know who are who are you know the, the public, then you need to stress on the design elements. If you are you know building an application for your internal employees, then you can, you have to ensure that they get the best of the features, which is the interaction with you know your existing systems, deriving data out of those existing systems, and helping them with their day-to-day -day work on an easier, easier mode. So a good amount of questions that we do get today is like, what should we build on? Whether we should consider native or whether we should consider HTML5. Now, native development, as I mentioned earlier, gives you the best user experience, the performance, and access to the device APIs, which are your, your cameras, your contacts, uh, you know the location of the device. So if there are any location-based services, these these can be taken you know in a very effective way. But the problem with native is that you know it, it is fragmented because there are so many devices. iOS you can still contain it, but when it comes to Android, it's, it's there are so many uh, devices out there, different form factors, different real estate, different you know execution power of the device itself. So we we have to keep a balance between you know native and HTML5, and that brings up to the question is whether we should go with hybrid application, which is nothing but an HTML5 application, you know, plus some JavaScript. I know I'm going technical, but I'm just using these words so that you know it, it helps you understand. There are certain audience members who come from a technical background, but HTML5 with JavaScript with a wrapper and gives you that native uh, experience. And this is how Facebook does it. Uh, I'm just taking a generic example. You know, Facebook does a variety of mobile applications. Precisely what you see is that every every fortnight there is an update that is coming from Facebook. You know, from from an application feature standpoint, it could be push notification, it could be alerts, it could be marketplace related alerts. Everything is kind of like you know getting uh, getting into the place. But all of this boils down to what is the cost and resources that you have to pay to kind of like get that best experience for your user? So in today's environment, it is more likely that you know all developers, you know, um, they they always look at application from ensuring that the application is user centric and not you know just from business centric. So we have to ensure that there is a marriage between what the business wants from the application and what the uh, user wants from the application. So we'll, we'll touch a little on, on the processes. Now, a lot of the, uh, uh, you know, a lot of the development companies out there um, are uh, processing about agile methodologies, which is one of the, you know, the best methodologies after waterfall. Now, uh, as as we always talk about, what's the difference? I mean, we can look 
from uh, on top of a waterfall and see how the water goes down and falls onto the rocks below. So if you uh, if you stand at the end, you get to see the the entire experience of the water falling. Now, just take that example on a product development. You start with the requirements, you go with the design, then develop, then test, then deploy. So you actually get to see the end product at the at the very you know uh, at the last phase. Uh, but but the two you know the two these are probably the most um, widely used methodologies. But you know when it comes to project management, the demand right now is you know you should go agile. The agile methodology often focuses on an iterative and incremental process of managing the design, the build activities, the various fields like business, engineering, and IT. Everything kind of like comes in in a in a loop stage. So the only one difference that I would see from an agile uh, uh, and waterfall is basically how you invest time in the early stages of your development. So if you want the mobile application to you know to give you some kind of um, incremental updates as to how exactly the users should experience, go with agile. And and there are again pros and cons, but agile probably is is the best way to go. And if you are a startup no heavy requirement gathering then it's a problem but if you if you go uh, in a waterfall method you have to specify your requirement uh, for waterfall method uh, we normally uh, or rather not we i would say i normally call it sit and wait model so you have to basically sit and wait until it it produces but in case of an agile there are active part of the project providing you continuous feedback you know through demos and by answering questions you know, from the from the developers, from the management, and the, from the QA. So there there are basically no surprises. At the end of the day, you would not have any kind of surprises. So let's let's look at what exactly is is an MVP. Now, a minimal viable product is probably the most trimmed down version of an entire application or a solution that can be released. Uh, it has primarily three characteristics. It has enough value that people are willing to use it or buy it initially. It demonstrates through future benefit to retain early adopters. It provides a feedback loop to guide future development. So, you know, given given a stand, there are certain recipes for MVP success. You need to ensure. Again, it boils down to the the points that I touched upon earlier. You need to understand your market. So, make sure that there are thorough market research. Know your market requirement. Now, if you're building an application for the consumers, what exactly the consumers would want? You need to understand who are the competitors in, in your field, what exactly they are doing. And then you start prioritizing your list. You know, you understand what exactly would be the best way to go and, you know, target these closed user groups. So don't boil the ocean, I mean, in, in terms of like trying to fit everything into, into uh, that particular MVP. Uh, you know, don't try to bring all of the features. Try to validate the business and the app idea, and it, see if if the users are willing to pay or buy the app. I mean, if it is a consumer-facing application, um, if it is an employee application, get some feedback from your internal employees to see whether it is a sustainable business model for you to even have an application for your employees. So. When we look at uh, the, the best-in-class mobile development process, a lot of the companies right now, they're, they're in this clueless spot because probably of peer pressure. So they just go ahead and plan for a mobile application. They, you know, they scout for vendors, they, they get the product done, they test the application, and that's about it. I mean, that's kind of like where it is. But what we recommend is how you should know what the application would do, and then you start planning. And that's exactly why we are covering this entire series of how you should choose your strategy or build your strategy, then what you should do next, and likewise. So focus on all of these different elements of knowing what the application would do to your user, knowing what the application would do to your business, and knowing what the application would do on an overall business model, how it fits into your business altogether. So when it comes to the desired situation that we would want you know, our customers to be in is we start with interviewing process. You know, we understand the customer's requirement. We, we understand what we do, you know, what we are doing for them. 
we are also do try to understand what they want from the application. So we observe a lot of these different kind of um, elements in, in their business. Then we come up with a plan, which is ideally providing them information about how the application would look like. You know, you know, and and there are so many tools out there which gives you, uh, you know, uh, which gives you ability to even build an application without even having a feature or a functionality tied to it. So we will focus uh, a lot on the user-centric designs. We will focus a lot on the, on, the uh, on what exactly is expected. We will focus a lot on the product itself. So application can be looked by a lot of development companies as just a, another project. You know, there are development shops which will take your requirement, build the application, give it to you. What we believe at Empiger is, it's, it's more of an experience. You are engineering a product for our customers. So it is a, we engineer the product so that it is, uh, you know, it is best for the users that you are, uh, you know, uh, you're targeting. And all of this put together, there are analytics, and then we do further interviews with our customers to give you that, that experience. So bottom line, Understand your plan. Know what you are going to be doing for the for, for the user from a mobility standpoint. Ship all of these features as a validated feature. Think about MVP. That saves a lot of time and money. Okay, I think uh, you know that's that's for all from my end. Uh, I'm going to pass over the controls to Pete. Okay. Thank you very much. Wait, let me just share my screen. Okay, so uh, first of all, there's a couple things I want to just kind of summarize. By the way, thank you very much, Ritwick. Um, although we kind of got into on the back end of developing your mobile uh, strategy, you you start you have to start looking a little bit at technology and the types of devices and tools, but everything goes back to relating to the business goals. You know, we talked earlier about having a business plan and a marketing plan. Well, this applies even if it's an internal application. I mean, you, I'm sure everyone can understand that if you're looking at building an application that's directly reaching out to consumers, whether the application is to be monetized or is to support further monetizing other parts of your business, Having a business plan, understanding what the goals are, what the, the return is, the channels, how are you going to market it, that's all very important. But that's equally important internally, whether it be uh, some type of uh, 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 automation you've built in to leverage mobility within your company. What is the goal? What is the plan? What is the adoption rate you're expecting? And what are the productivity enhancements or the shorter time to market? That, that business plan that, and, and how you market it externally, internally is very important. And the whole idea around agile and then having a, a, a min, uh, an MVP or a minimal viable product is to reduce risk and to help make sure that you can be successful. And if many of you have been involved over the years in IT projects, there has been a lot of money spent in IT projects that don't get to the conclusion or when they get to the conclusion, they don't deliver on the expectation. So by leveraging methodologies like Agile, where there's an iterative approach, where you are part of and experiencing the evolution, and at each sprint, as it's called, you get to see and feel and touch that application as it's being built. You can evaluate if it's on target. You can make changes as you continue to move forward. A minimum bottle product, by the way, is a full product. So if you think about the agile approach, you'll go through several iterations, and then you want to deliver the minimum viable product. It is, as, as Ritwick said, something that is saleable, something that meets the requirements, but it's not every bell and whistle. By doing that, you get to market quicker, okay? And you also have an opportunity to quickly learn from your intended audience, internal or external, and then approve, continuing to leverage an agile process and make incremental improvements so you deliver those improvements faster and those improvements are really on target. 
So really quick, what are five mistakes people make when developing a mobile strategy? First one is thinking that an app is a strategy, and just building an application is not a strategy. Just because you have one doesn't mean you've thought it through, and this goes back to really first stepping back and saying, okay, understanding mobility and some of the capabilities and understanding the people, the intended audience, again, whether it be internal or external, what is possible? What should my strategy be? You know, some people talk about a mobile first strategy, but there's a reason they're saying that. They're not just saying it as, hey, it's, it's good. It's, it's politically correct in today's world to say, I'm going to go mobile first. They're thinking through what is really the value. Second thing is treating a mobile experience like it's a desktop. A mobile device is not just another screen. It's not a bolt on to your existing infrastructure. I talked about it earlier. When you think there's things you can do, there are things that weren't possible before that you can now do leveraging some of the uniquenesses. Whether it be one of the big ones is just alerts and notifications, personalized alerts and notifications, and then personalized based on where that person is. Um, uh, engaging depending on where they are and what they're doing. The user experience, the functionality that, uh, as Ritwick said earlier, whether it's um, cameras and video capability and interaction and peer-to-peer -peer communications uh, through the mobile devices, don't, don't, don't just say, hey, okay, it was on my desktop, now let's make it available on mobile phone. Now I'm gonna put a little caveat on that. When you think about if I've got information to share, I've got a web portal, and you know many people are leveraging mobile devices even to get to your website. And by the way, you can find out very easily leveraging tools that are very available like Google Analytics, you can find out how many of your prospects or customers or even internally are using a mobile device, what type of mobile device or form factor they're using even just to get to your website. So the one caveat I put to number two is, having a mobile-friendly website, making it easier for people and making it a better experience for someone to understand if they're going to your mobile website to be able to consume that information from a mobile phone should be a high priority. But thinking that you're gonna build a mobile strategy just by saying, we're gonna move it from the desktop and move it from this traditional environment over to mobile, you'll probably let yourself down on the real value that's there and the opportunity to take advantage. Building apps that don't align with company strategy. Again, I know this sounds a little bit redundant, and there's a reason we keep saying this over and over again. Uh, think beyond just accessing through mobile. You know, focus on apps that have a direct impact on business metrics. The way you do that is going through those steps that Ritwick just went through and talking about how do I develop a mobile strategy. But it all starts, you know, we, we develop uh, at Empire and we've worked with customers. We've brought in other customers that have gone down a path and, and it didn't work. We've kind of helped kind of clean it up. We do a lot of consultative work with clients in helping understand what are you trying to accomplish from a business value. It's got to start there. We at Empire would absolutely say you're better off not to spend the money, not to make the investment, unless you can see a clear path to achieving the business goals uh, that you're setting out to achieve. So not focusing on innovative view cases. This is kind of similar in the way that there is capabilities that I mentioned a moment ago in a mobile device in, in a variety of mobile devices, and not just phones now, and as Ritwick said earlier, you've got a bunch of different form factors, to not focus on innovative ways to leverage mobility to satisfy those business requirements is, it would be a shame. It really is an opportunity to think beyond what you know today in the traditional web or desktop application. Uh, uh, for example, uh, we go, like, think, even internally, you're going from presenting pages of information to truly providing transactional workflows through these mobile devices. This is now all possible when you start thinking outside of the norm. 
And then finally, and again, I know I've talked about this tied to the business plan, you need a marketing plan. And I'm not talking about just for external consumers. It's not just about, you know, if it's external, that let's get it up on the app store and, you know, get it out there and they will come. It doesn't work. And even internally, you've known with any project, IT or otherwise, you have to market, you have to sell, you have to communicate what the business goals are internally, what the value is to that employee or to that organization or group within your company. So the five things I'm showing here are really when people don't really think it, they don't put together a strategy, this is the kind of result they see. So just in summarizing, and we're just about done here, we've got some questions to go over. Identifying your business goals, documenting a plan. And, you know, we talk about a business plan. Someone will say, well, wait a minute, I'm not, it's not a new app I'm trying to sell. But you do need a business plan. It doesn't have to be very complicated. But even for an internal, I'm going to build this new system that's going to help my employees, you know, engage with our human resources and, and capability to, you know, to either sign in, time management, get information about events that's going on, collaborate. What's the plan? You know, what is the purpose of doing that? What is the ROI internally? You know, I'm going to automate uh, some of our back-end uh, workflow, say invoice processing. Well, what is the direct benefit and how many, I'm going to make it easier to process? Is it going to take less time? Is it going to make my employee happy? Is it going to make my end customer happier? Really looking through, this is something we do at Empiger up front in the planning process. Um, if you ever do business with us, if you've done business with us before, you'll see that we spend quite a bit of time pushing that understanding of what the business goals are. Uh, identifying the stakeholders, the users, and then, you know, the users, the end users, and then the people who have to maintain or the administrators, the back end. So you have to look at all the people who will use or, 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 or have some level of usage of the product. We talked about identifying the device, the types of devices. Um, you know, if you have an internal application, uh, actually one of the questions we've already gotten, I'll, I'll answer right here. It's like, do you have to build it for Apple and Android and Windows? Well, if it's an internal application and it's a very specific device, you could probably get away with just building it on one platform and save some money because if you're gonna distribute, say, a tablet, for a certain function in, in inventory. Well, there's no reason to have multiple devices. You, you could go with one device. Um, if it's external or if you're leveraging it where you want your employees who have their own devices uh, be able to access and use an application, well, your, your employees are gonna have a variety of, of, of uh, platforms, whether it's iOS, uh, Apple, Android, it could be any one of the Android devices, it could still be Windows. So you have to think, well, if I really want my internal population leveraging this application, I need to think about having support for multiple platforms. And then we talked about the tools and we talked about the process. Try to talk about it more at a business level, but you can see how they're all connected. And you can see how the, 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 the technology, the development process, that's last. It's really the upfront work and evaluation for what you're trying to do. That's what's most important when defining uh, your application strategy. Okay, before I just have a couple of slides at the end here that um, we can uh, use to kind of tell you a little about Empire, but before we do that, we did have a couple of questions. One question we got was with Agile, uh, can you start you know, development of a certain set of functions and then adjust after getting feedback? And, and that's exactly one of the benefits. Uh, with an agile development, you literally create a window, it could be two, three weeks, of a specific set of functions that you're going to uh, develop. And then at the end of that short period of time, you get to actually touch and feel and see it functioning and kind of see the product or, or, or the application start to come to life. And you have an availability there to then say, hey, you know, it's not exactly what I thought it would be. I want to make these changes. So while you will build it in an agile world, you build multiple sprints or multiple iterations. You plan those all the way out, but as you get to each end of a sprint, you can make changes to what you had originally had done and at the same time keeping keep moving forward. Uh, 
at the end result, hopefully your first set of uh, agile sprints, you have a, a minimum viable product, something that you can actually go out the door to get user acceptance testing on all the way through, actually sell it or go into production because it is a fully functional product. You've just decided I'm only going to put the features in there that I absolutely need. Then you start getting feedback and then the second phase and the third phase of those products, you start to evolve them and then you can start adding more features and capabilities. All of this is about minimizing your costs, minimizing your risk, and maximizing your uh, capability to be very successful. Let's see here. Let me go uh, and feel free to continue to jump questions in. There's another one. Um, hold on a second here. All right, Q and A. All right. Yeah, what is I the see question? So I'll probably I'll answer one of them. So there is a question over here which says. Uh, is it more important to prioritize making my website mobile friendly over building a new mobile application? So uh, I'll, I'll take that question. Uh, if your goals are primarily related to marketing and you know or public communications, a mobile responsive website is probably the best you know or or, or it, it is practical first step. Now. And and this is because a mobile website has a number of inherent, you know, advantages over apps, including broader accessibility, compatibility, and cost effectiveness. So uh, the the one thing that probably for a business owner to understand is if you want uh, an information to reach out to your consumers in a faster mode or almost instant instantly, look at mobile website. If you are worried about you know uh, accessibility of the information from various devices, you know the compatibility of uh, a website is much more higher in, uh, from a device perspective. And you know mobile apps today, I mean devices itself are updating and upgrading itself. The operating system is upgrading, so whenever there is an there is a need, uh, mobile websites can mostly um, get updated on, on a real time. I mean, it, there, there's nothing that that would stop uh, because if it is an application, you need to think about how exactly you know you are dealing with it. I mean, let's for an example uh, take um, say Uber. Uber wanted to start a platform. Um, if if it, I'm, I'm just you know talking on the terms of when they started. Would they want fair splitting, gamification, countdown timers, and prizes? You know, could they have done that uh, at the very beginning? Absolutely. But did they start worrying about it? No, because it would have been a, a good amount of deal for them to think about it. So their focus at the, in the initial stage was just the core transaction, matching drivers and riders, you know, uh, based on proximity, and that's kind of like what they. Started with, and then now you see, you know, the different kind of applications that Uber is coming up with: the Uber Tea, the Uber Pool, the Uber Eat, and, and and whatnot. So that boils down to the question: is if you are if your target audience wants to just grab information, you know, uh, you know, generic information or company-based information, go the mobile web route. But if you are giving them certain specific, understand the MVP for them and then develop a native application. Go ahead, Pete. All right, great. Uh, we've, got, we've got time for a couple more. There's one on here that says, is there a major cost difference between building a mobile-friendly web application versus building a native mobile app? And you know, what are the benefits with the cons? Um, I, I'll take a cut at this real quick, and if you want to jump in, feel free. So sure. I don't I don't want to oversimplify it, but when you think about a mobile-friendly web application, one of the benefits is if it works and it's mobile-friendly, you build that web application and it'll run across multiple platforms. So it definitely can be a less expensive implementation for an application because when you build it and probably build it in like HTML5, the technology. It'll run on a tablet, it'll run on a web, you know, on a regular laptop or desktop. It'll also run um, on a, you know, a, a phone, a smartphone. The, the challenge is you're limited on the functionality and some of the capabilities. For example, the uh, alerting and notification and the location services, depending on what the application is. So there's things you won't be able to do. 
there are some user experience implications. Now, as the web, like HTML5 technology improves, they've added better and better capabilities to emulate some of those functions. But there's definitely a difference in potentially performance. There's a difference in your capabilities. Uh, but that's where it goes back to what am I trying to accomplish and what is the best way to do it? But uh, building a native mobile app, um, you know, traditionally those users that are really engaged in using their mobile devices, they appreciate the performance and the usability of a native app. But again, that's a balance. And sometimes the best way to get in the game is to build something that can provide a good experience on the mobile, in the mobile environment. What's really important is that you don't provide a bad experience. And, and, and there's still a lot of companies out there that really do count, say, on their website, not even a, um, a web application, but just your website. And they count on that to be a resource for people to learn about their company. And in many cases, uh, they haven't even made that mobile friendly. So when someone goes to look at your website on a mobile phone, it, it, it's, it's discouraging. But the, the main difference, it, it, there's function, like anything, it's cost and capability. And uh, a native mobile app, clearly the benefits, um, especially user experience, capability, and functionality is a lot higher. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna, let's go with one more question. And I'm gonna pass this one to you, Ritwick. What is the difference, and we actually were just talking about this, and you mentioned this earlier, but someone asked a question about what's the difference between a hybrid mobile app and HTML5 mobile app? Like, I mean, I, so that, that's the question. Can you kind of address that? Sure, sure. So, uh, okay, so hybrid mobile application, as I was mentioning earlier, um, you have like, you have HTML5 and you add JavaScript. Uh, it's kind of like a wrapper, uh, you know, uh, within uh, taking some of the device capabilities. Um, you know, precisely like so solutions like Ionic and all of that are designed for giving, uh, giving users that native feel and not a web experience feel. So to a certain extent, this is probably, you know, takes the best of both worlds, which is, you know, giving the user uh, 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 a native application experience. So Forrester and, uh, you know, Aberdeen and Gartner kind of like always, you know, suggests that you could potentially start with a hybrid approach, but then again, who is your user? If your user is is the you know is the public, and if you're building a consumer-facing application which has has product and catalogs and all of that, go with the native approach rather than being in the in the in a hybrid approach. Now, what exactly is uh, an HTML5 mobile app? Now, HTML5 is basically um, you know it's it's kind of like a a, a browser-based application a browser based application which can still get you know uh, give you that um, accessibility to device features generic device features like your audio and video you know the cameras and things like that but uh, it kind of like uh, dramatically increases um, you know its capabilities over traditional web applications that are trying to run on you know on your mobile device because the form factor will not allow them to do so HTML5, the way we look at it, it, it makes your application more liquid in design features. So, you know, it is responsive. It will, it will change its way from, you know, uh, in the, uh, it will change its form based on the device it's being accessed from. Okay. Thank you. Well, look, uh, we're out of time. Uh, I hope uh, we were able to adequately answer those questions. Uh, just before we leave, I just want to share a couple things with you. And everyone will get um, a PDF of this presentation. Uh, just a little bit about Empire, if you're not aware. Uh, we've been doing this work for 12 years, whether it be for the cloud, mobile, web. Uh, we've done 300 plus mobile applications in every variety. Uh, I think what's important is we as a company are as focused on helping customers at the concept and consulting level as we are all the way through the design, 
the development and, and support. Uh, one other thing I'll share with you, again, this will be in your um, uh, slide deck or you can get it off our website. Uh, we do have multiple practices that we bring really strong expertise uh, from certifications, working best practices with the vendors on phones, to things like Sitecore certified implementation, uh, specialist Salesforce certified, um, and, and the list goes on. And uh, we work with multiple cloud implementations from the big boys like Amazon and uh, Google and Azure from Microsoft, Rackspace, IBM Cloud. So we do a lot of work with helping customers solve business problems with technology, mobile otherwise. And uh, if you are in the need, if you're looking for help to figure out first, should I do it? And then if you should do it, what should I do and how can I do it? I, I think we could help you out there. The last thing I'll leave you with is today we wanted to kind of give you a high level overview of an approach to building out a strategy. Over the next six weeks, about every two weeks, we'll be hosting another webinar and doing a bit of a drill down in specific areas, including specific examples uh, of uh, projects we've worked on. For example, in two weeks, we're going to talk about mobile applications that drive better executive decisions. And this is about everything from you know uh, dashboards that help you real time understand the health of your company, profit and loss, you know expenses, sales, to providing you real time information about inventory levels, uh, resource capabilities, and then the follow on uh, webinar will be targeting external customer engagement type applications, and then the final one it'll be looking internal the things that can help employees, how you can automate, how you can engage with all those employees we talked about that are also leveraging mobile devices. So I apologize, we've gone over a few minutes. I hope you found this of value. Again, we will be following up with a, a PDF of this slide deck. I just wanna thank Ritwick uh, for co-presenting with me today and I wanna thank everyone today for spending time with Empire Technologies. Everyone have a great day, thank you.